welcome back to our channel again today we're going to be making a cover or a case initially my mom asked me to make these two covers or cases for her bible so she wanted the spirit to carry her bible around easily that's why we have a handle at the top so i made one for her that's the one in black then after making that one i decided to make a video for you guys so that you can know how i made this bible cover you can use this cover or case for any other thing you could use it for your for your books you could use it for your makeup kits you could you know slip in some banknotes in there you could do anything you you want with it um you have to know that this cover or casing is finished with binding so if you are scared of binding i think this is the time to overcome that fear because this binding this um, binding finishes it very neatly and professionally um as you can see there's a handle at the top and yeah there's also a zip that goes around the bag so without further ado let's get into sewing so here are the pieces we need to sew our own cover or case we need two main body pieces in exterior fabric as you can see i've cut two exterior of the main body and are fused with foam you could fuse yours with um fusible fleece as well and then you're going to be fusing it on the wrong side of your fabrics we're also going to be cutting two lining pieces of this main body also fused with a medium weight interfacing next next we need the bottom gussets which i've gone ahead to cut in my exterior fabric we're cutting just one fused also with um, fusible foam sewing foam or fusible fleece we're going to still be needing the same bottom gusset in lining fabric as well then we need zipper gussets we need two of this two of this in our exterior fabric you can um you can fuse this with foam but i went ahead and fused mine with a stabilizer that is equivalent to decoville lights the two zipper pockets also will be cut in our lining fabrics as well we need two slip pockets in our exterior two in our exterior fabrics you do not need to fuse that with any interfacing except you're using a very lightweight fabric you also need this slip pocket in um lining fabrics as well you need the handle cover measurements will be given in pattern pieces you need the handle itself and that will be cut in webbing in a one inch webbing actually at 12 inches you need the this is the main zipper the measurements also will be given in the pattern so let's get sewing to start with we need a main zipper and the zipper gussets both in exterior and our lining fabrics as you can see first i'm going to be notching the zipper gussets both the lining and the exterior and also be notching the zipper itself so i'm notching to just find the center of these fabrics and the zipper so it so that it is easier to center the zipper on the fabric and everything aligns properly but for the zipper we are notching both sides of the zipper tip lay one zipper gusset lining right side facing you then lay the zipper that's the main zipper on this lining make sure the zipper is right side up as well so the wrong side of the zipper is against the right side of the lining and we are basting at one fourth of an inch 
all the way down as soon as this is done we're going to be taking the exterior zipper pockets one of them and then you're going to be laying it right side down on the zipper so the right sides of both the zipper and the exterior zipper um, gossets are together clip in place and then you're going to be sewing at 3 8 of an inch from the edge as you can see the zipper is already sandwiched between both exterior and lining pieces press both gusset pieces away from the zipper and you top stitch as one eighth of an inch from the seam as soon as this is done I'm going to be repeating with the other side of the zipper so just like we did earlier you're going to be laying the lining zipper gossets right side facing you then the zipper tape on the lining gossets right side also facing you so that the wrong side of the zipper is against the right side of the lining gossets clip in place like we did before and based at one fourth of an inch from the edge When you're done, take the uh, the other exterior zipper gusset and then lay it right side down on the zipper so that right sides of zipper mm -hmm. and gussets are together. Clip in place like we did before and stitch with a with three eighths of an inch seam allowance like we did earlier press both cosy pieces away from the zipper and top stitch at one eighth of an inch from the seam so i'm trying to make sure the lining and the exterior gusset pieces are pressed flat away from the zipper the zipper gusset is finally assembled so before we get into assembling the bottom gussets we we have to make the handle first so to make the handle we need the webbing and then we need the strap for the handle cover first melt the edges of the webbing with a lighter so it does not free then notch the handle cover on both sides so you can get the center when this is done you place this handle cover so that um, so that the wrong side is facing you so what you just did to this handle cover you're going to be doing to the webbing as well so you're going to be notching the webbing and you're notching the webbing also to get the center so that it can align this center with that of the handle cover mm -hmm. Now that this is done, you place the webbing on the wrong side of this handle cover so that the sensors are aligned. The best way to do this is to um, keep it in place with a double sided tape. When that is done, fold the handle cover, the raw edge of the handle cover, fold it on the webbing so that the raw edge of the handle cover meets the edge of the webbing this way you notice that your webbing folds in a little bit if you notice it's folded in that's fine there's nothing wrong 
what we're just doing here is that we're trying to wrap the handle cover around the webbing only at the center so we're going to clip this in place as you can see make sure this the edge uh, the raw edge of the fabric is touching the raw edge of the webbing clip in place and stitch at about a quarter a quarter of an inch from the edge when this is done fold the other side of the of the fabric or the leather so that it's almost meets the folded side the other folded side this way you notice that the webbing is kind of folded a bit which is also not a problem so we're stitching again from like at about uh, one fourth of an inch from the edge now the handle is done we're going to bring back the that's the bottom because that's the web that's we're notching now so you're notching both sides along the length or the height so that you get the center when this is done place this bottom closet exterior right side facing you and align the webbing edge that's for the handle that you just made align the webbing edge with this that center notch make sure the webbing the webbing is well centered and then clip in place so after clipping in place i just went ahead and measured two inches from the short edges of the bottom closets and we are doing this because our sewing would start from the raw edge and end at that mark we just made at two inches so we're going to be sewing a rectangular box round and also on the other side now that this is done lay this bottom gossets right side facing you then the zipper gossets that you made earlier you're going to be placing it on this bottom gosset so that right sides are together and the short row edges are aligned clip in place and based at about one quarter of an inch from the edge then the lining of the bottom corset would now be placed on the zipper gossets this time around make sure the lining the linings are right sides together clip in place and stitch at three eighths of an inch from the edge By the time you're done stitching, you realize that the zipper gusset has now been sandwiched between the lining and the exterior bottom gusset pieces. Press these pieces away from the zipper gusset. Make sure it's pressed well and flat. And top stitch at one eighth of an inch from the seam. You can give it another layer of top stitch if you so wish. As you can see, I top stitched mine twice. One eighth of an inch from the seam and about a quarter of an inch from the first top stitch. You repeat with the other side of the bottom corset and the other side of 
the zipper pockets. Sorry, the zipper gossets actually. So you're going to be placing the exterior of the zipper gosset on the exterior of the bottom gosset, right sides together. Then you clip in place. First, you base that about a quarter of an inch. Then you place the lining of the bottom corset on the lining of the zipper corset. Make sure the bottom corset lining is not twisted. After clipping in place, you're going to be stitching at three eighths of an inch from the edge. Now that that is done, just like we did the other time, you're going to be pressing the lining and the exterior bottom corset pieces away from the zipper corset. You press it flat and you're going to be top stitching like we did with the other side at one eighth of an inch from this seam and if you so desire as well you can give it a second layer of top stitch Now the gusset is almost ready. You now have this like gusset loop. You're going to be setting this gusset aside for now while you work on the slip pockets. For the slip pockets, you notice that one side you have um a side that has curved edges while the other side has a straight edge so you have both exterior pieces and both line pieces to start with you need one exterior piece and one lining piece of the slip pocket you make sure the right side of the lining and the right side of the exterior are together Curved edges match in matching and then the straight edges also aligned. Clip along the straight edge and stitch at three eighths of an inch from the edge. Depending on the fabric you're using, you could press the seam open with um, an iron. But if you're using vinyl like I'm using here, you could just press with your fingers. So now you have turned your slip pocket to the right side and you have pressed, you are going to be top stitching that seam at one eighth of an inch from the seam just the straight edge repeat with the other slip pockets and you're done you now need the main exteriors of this bag so for the main exteriors the idea is that we're going to be placing these slip pockets we just made on these main exteriors. 
So what we do is you can pick any side. Make sure the curved edges are matching. Then clip the slip pocket in place. Baste the slip pocket at about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Repeat with the other lining and the other slip pockets. And you're done with the main lining. Now we're going to move to the to assembling the exterior and the lining together. So you're going to place the exterior wrong side facing you. Don't forget you have your foam fused to the wrong side of the main exterior already. And then this main exterior that you just assembled place it wrong side facing down on the exterior so that wrong sides of both lining and exterior are together make sure all the edges are matching and clip in place based at a quarter of an inch from the edge. You're going to be repeating with the other exterior and the other lining. Now your exteriors are done. You have your slip pockets already in place. And we're going to move to the corset again. So for the corset, before we as before we finally assemble the bag, we're going to top stitch round the corset to keep the lining in place. Our top stitching about a quarter of an inch from the edge on both sides. Your gusset is ready. Now it's time for final assembly. To finally assemble your bag, the right side of your exterior is meant to be facing you, but because we have to know the position of our slip pockets, we have to first make sure the wrong side is facing you. And what I mean by the wrong side is the lining side facing you. So, as you can see, the slip pocket is on my right but you could make the slip pockets on your left that's if you want the cover of your book or whatever your bible to be able to go inside the slip pocket but if you just want it to be a normal slip pocket where you could just slip things easily without the cover of the bible going into that then the slip pocket can be on your right please note this position then you're going to turn your exterior now right side facing you that's after you have determined the position of your slip pockets so we're notching our gossets first to notch the gossets you fold the gossets at the remember the seam where the zipper gossets and the bottom gossets meet make sure the seam matches or is aligned and then you fold at that point Folding at that point gives you the half point or the center of your gusset. Then you notch. You could just snip those tiny things um, off. Or you could mark with a, any marker of your choice. You'll be doing the same thing with the exterior. 
where you're going to be folding the exterior to in half to get the center point of the exterior. So as you can see, I'm folding my exterior in half along the waist. Then I'll be notching both the top and the bottom. That helps me to get the center top and the center bottom. Does that make sense? Then we're going to now be placing the exterior back on the right side. Remember where we already determined for the position of the slip pocket. By placing the gossets on this exterior right sides together, make sure the bottom gusset area aligns with the slip pockets. That is if you want your slip pockets to be like mine at the moment, where your it's just a normal slip pocket. But if you want your Bible cover or your book cover to enter into the pockets then your slip pockets will be on the left and your bottom gusset will be on the right so it means your bottom gusset and your slip pocket would not be aligning they'll be opposite to each other so you need to be clipping your gusset round this main exterior you clip and then you stitch at three eighths of an inch from the edge as you can see I'm done with assembling the gussets and one of the exteriors so now I'm trimming to reduce bulk so you can trim the seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch. After trimming is done, we'll be binding that seam for a clean and professional finish. So for the binding, you can use a fold over elastic and I'll be recommending a one inch fold over elastic so that you could have like, um, so you can go around the raw edges easily. So you're going to be binding round. Clip the binding in place. So if you would like to make your own binding, measurements have been given in the pattern and also how to make your own binding also in the pattern. We're sewing the binding in place to cover the raw edges of our seam. Binding done already. So you're going to be turn yeah you're going to be turning to the wrong side to see if you missed any edge. If you notice that any edge is not covering properly, just restitch, stitch again to make sure everything is all covered and neat. We'll be repeating with the other exterior. Same thing we did earlier, determine the position of the line of the slip pocket. But before then, we're going to be notching like we did before. Notching done. Determine where your slip pockets would be if if you your slip pocket was on the right before then it means the slip pocket now will still be on the right if it was on the left it will be on the left now mine was on the right 
earlier so now it would be on the right main exterior right side facing you the gossets also right side facing down so the right sides are together and the bottom gosset is on the slip pocket that's because my slip pocket was is on the right so if you want your slip pocket to be on the left so that your bible cover can go into the pockets then your slip pocket will be on the other side so i've clipped the gosset to the exterior and i'll be sewing in place at three years of an inch from the seam from the edge rather stitching done trim the seam seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch like we did before Combining piece out, so you'll be binding the seams row edges. Wrap the binding around the around the seams row edges. Make sure the top and the bottom edges of the seam are enclosed in the binding clip the binding in place and clip round like we did earlier I was stitching at three to an inch binding is in place check round to see if you are able to catch every part of the seam and if you've noticed any unstitched parts of the binding stitch again to make sure everything is well done you have neatly finished your bible cover or case with all raw edges enclosed within the binding i hope you enjoyed making this cover i'd like to see your own version of this cover when you're done don't forget to share your mix in our facebook group in your favorite sewing groups, on Instagram, or on any other social media platform. While you're at it, hashtag easy sew cover or easy sew case so I can see what you have created. To have access to the pattern I've used to make this cover, follow the instructions to download the file in the description below. Please give this video a thumb up and share to anyone you think might be interested. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.